Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners, and I want to thank Myron for sending along a donation one time. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your support. And uh, if you would like to send along a one-time donation as well, you can do so at support.greatdetectives.net. Or you can become one of our regular patrons, patreon.greatdetectives.net. So thankful to all of our uh, listeners who decide to give to support the program. Well, now we're going to get into today's episode of That Hammer Guy. And we're missing a a large beginning chunk of the episode. Uh, But I think what has happened, uh, at least part of it, is uh, something that uh, can be deduced by listening to it. We know that there has been some tension uh, between Mike and his secretary, Velda, and uh, that he, that uh, her brother has in some way shown uh, communist uh, political activity uh, that's been revealed to Mike. So let's go ahead and we will pick it up from there. Uh, the uh, program uh, came after four four episodes after the previous one. Uh, The original air date was uh, June the 2nd of 1953, and the title of this one is Mock Hammer Sees Red. You know every shading of Velda's voice, but you've never heard it shiver with fright like this. You forget all about your bitterness and get over there fast. There's a strange man in my room, Mike. He shot me, bleeding badly. You follow Velda to a bedroom and you see a young, slim guy sprawled across the clean sheets in an attitude of peaceful sleep. But when you move him, you see your sheets aren't clean anymore. Well, will he be all right? You can see that the wound is only superficial. You get her to bring you some hot water and clean towels. You can't bring the guy to, but after a while you stop the flow of blood and cover him up to keep him warm. And then you take time enough to notice that Velda seems ready to break apart for the first time since you hired her. Don't look at me like that, Mike. Now, you better get hold of yourself. There's nothing wrong with me. Oh, no, let us think. I, I suppose it was a surprise. Surprise? I heard some noise at my door. I, I thought you'd come back, and when I opened it, this man fell in. Oh, Mike, it was terrible. You didn't see who shot him? No, I, I don't know a thing about it. Okay, Velda. Mike. Hmm? Who are you calling? Pat Chambers at Homicide. Why? Well, why do you think the law says all bullet wounds have to be reported to the police? Please, Mike. Put the phone down. But, Velda, I... Please. What's the deal? I don't want you to report this. Can't you make one exception? The law doesn't believe in exceptions. What's the matter with you, Velda? You want me to lose my license? If, If there isn't a very good reason, isn't it enough that... You know. What's the very good reason? I've had a very quiet life. I've never been involved in notoriety. Well, I wouldn't know. You never asked me about my past. If you had, I'd have had nothing to tell you. No scandal. Those were your terms. Well? Sorry, the reason isn't good enough. Oh, wait, Mike, please. There's another reason. The real reason? Yes. The man in there, he's the reason. And what's that supposed to mean? Mike, he's my brother. In just a moment, we'll return to the Mickey Spillane mystery, That Hammer Guy. And now, back to the Mickey Spillane mystery, That Hammer Guy. When Velda 
told you the wounded guy in the other room is a brother. The shark is so great you stare at her like a dead herring on a gourmet's plate. Now you know why she's so rattled. I never told you before that I had a brother. She wanted to be your secretary on her terms. And part of them was that you never asked her about her past. You didn't even know anybody in her family was alive. You don't know what it's been like. I even changed my name when I came here. You think you're entitled to an explanation and she's willing to give it to you. Because of Bill. I was ashamed of him. I, I didn't want to be identified with him. He was in with the wrong people. Doing the wrong things. Before tonight, I hadn't seen him for four years. Zelda, what do you mean, wrong people, wrong things? He was mixed up with the Communist Party. Oh. Before we stopped speaking, I tried to reason with him, but it was useless. Mm -hmm. How did he happen to come to you? I don't know. No explanations, huh? He only said that as he got out of his car downstairs, somebody took a shot at him. From where? From across the street. That's the reason I didn't want you to report it. Mikey told me he wanted to get away and hide... He said that the next time they'd kill him, the next time they wouldn't miss. Zelda. He's still my brother. I can't let that happen. Zelda, I don't think you have to worry about that happening. But they've already tried one. That's what he told you. But, but I'm sure they didn't. How can you say a thing like that? Your brother told you someone shot at him from across the street, right? Yes. Well, the flesh around the wound was singed. And there were traces of powder marks on his clothes. Mike, that means he was fired at close range. Yeah. Also means another thing. As far as I can tell, Velda, your brother shot himself. Velda makes you some coffee and you sit around and smoke a deck of cigarettes until a brother comes to. I don't want to talk about it. I just want to die. The way you're feeling, you wish he would. But all you do is convince him he'd rather stick around here than be called for by the FBI. The only way he can do that is to level with you. You're certainly not very sympathetic about a guy who's been shot. I'd hate to tell you how unsympathetic I can be. Suppose you're referring to my political connections? If you can call it that. We all make mistakes. Well, sometimes a guy tries to correct them. They wouldn't let me out. Yeah, you must have tried real hard. No, I really didn't. At least you get a name for honesty. I can't afford to be otherwise now. Your sister tried to talk some sense into you four years ago. Four years ago, I was younger. You know what it is to be a young guy and broke? Is that why you belonged? My only reason. I was a paid courier. I wasn't interested in politics or party dogma, just money. I was paid for my work and I didn't ask questions. Why'd you shoot yourself? Shoot myself? Where'd you get that idea? I told Velda what happened. You just lost your raid for honesty. He won't believe me now. Try again, maybe you'll be lucky. What I'm going to tell you is the truth. Keep trying. With that attitude... What do you expect? The truth was never taken too seriously by your comrades, was it? I told you I wasn't concerned with dogma, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Now convince me. I was in it only for the money. I never asked questions. Well, this afternoon I had to ask myself a question. Sixty-four dollar one. Why? I was to deliver an envelope at four this morning to a man who'd be waiting for it at the corner of 24th and Lake Street. What was in the envelope? I don't know. They never told me what I carried. Go on. Well, this morning, just as I was getting into my car in front of my hotel, someone fired a shot at me. I thought I told you I proved you shot yourself. Oh, you don't understand. That shot missed me. I got away. I needed help, a place to hide, so I came here to my sister. But you did shoot yourself. Yes. I had to. Why? I knew Felder wouldn't help me unless I could get through sympathy, prove I was in serious trouble. But told her the truth, she wouldn't believe you. You think I believe you now? Suppose not. What's the difference? Okay. What kind of envelope are you supposed to deliver? Nine by twelve, plain brown manila envelope. You don't know what's in it? I told you I didn't. Where is it now? I wanted to get rid of it, so I checked at the parcel room in the bus station. Have the receipt? In my wallet. On the night table over here. Okay, Bill, you stay here with Velda. I'll be back in a few hours. Where are you going? To take up where you left off. You mean deliver that envelope? I mean to find the guy you were supposed to deliver it to. Crazy, you can't do that alone. 3.30 now. I've only got a half an hour. Listen, they'll stop at nothing. Believe me, you may get killed. Now, believe me, Buster, I love my life, but for stakes like these, the risk is worth taking. minutes to four in the morning, you find yourself anchoring down the damp sidewalk of a waterfront street with a brown manila envelope under your arm. 
You don't know whether to figure yourself for the hero or the victim in this cloak and dagger bit. You try not to think about it as you approach the rendezvous. First you think it's your nerves slapping at the side of your haircut, but then you're sure that the faint echo of footsteps behind you are for real. You stop. You look back into the gray street, but no one's there. Then you hear it again. Scuffling feet, all right. But what makes matters worse is you can't see a thing. All you can do is keep walking. You almost reached the corner when... Just a minute. What? Do you uh, have a light? Hmm? A light for my cigarette. Is that all you want? What do you think? That's all you'll get. Here. Right. Oh, wait. I thought all you wanted was a light. Don't get fresh. You forgot your matchbook. Well, they were present to remember me by. Do as I say, Mr. Hammer. Please. Hmm? Don't walk to that corner. It's a trap. What? That man who's been following you. There's another one waiting at the corner. Turn into the alley right ahead. I'll meet you around the next block. My car is parked in front of the warehouse. It's a black sedan. Now you look more like the convertible type. And you're going to be converted into a hamburger if you don't do as I say. Who are you? Anything but what your wounded friend is. I'll explain the rest in the car. You don't ask any more questions. You turn into the alley, then break into a run along the narrow passageway towards the next block. And then you're brought up short against a high, flat brick wall. For a moment, you stand there in the dark. And then suddenly, a blinding pair of car lights pin you up against the wall. You're about to make a crazy dash for the opening, but you don't get a chance to move. Out! In just a moment, we'll return to the Mickey Spillane Mystery... That Hammer Guy. And now, back to the Mickey Spillane mystery. That Hammer Guy. You've been led up a blind alley by a dame. And when you come to, it's daylight and the sun doesn't help your aching head. You're surprised to find yourself alive, but you're not surprised at all to find the envelope missing. As soon as you straighten out, you head for Felder's apartment. Wound or no wound, her brother's going to answer a few pointed questions. You press the button again and again, but there's no answer. And then your nose gets a whiff of the stuff, the faint odor of escaping gas. You check the crack in the door, and the odor is strong today. You don't have time to call for help, so you keep butting the door until your shoulder is a soft, sore mass, and then it finally gives way. You rush around the gas-filled apartment, breaking windows and letting fresh air rush in. Then you turn off the gas jets on the stove and lift Velda from the floor. That's it. Get up, Velda. That's it, honey. Come on now. Breathe in all the fresh air you can. All right? They did it. Who? Two men. They forced their way into the apartment just after you left. Where's your brother? One of them took Bill away. The other one brought me into the kitchen. and That's all I remember till you were standing over me. Yeah. Well, they get rid of you and make it look like suicide. Why me? Well, maybe they thought you knew too much. You were quite expendable like everyone else is who stands in their way. But, Bill, what happened to him? Well, your guess is as good as mine. They may have killed him. Zelda. I don't believe it. He's got to be alive. Now don't bank on it. I'm, I'm sorry I asked you not to call the police. You might as well now. No, no, not yet. I'm going to find out about your brother myself. Mike, you may be killed. Yeah. You know, you took the words right out of your brother's mouth. And you know what? He was almost right. You make Zelda think you've got something up your sleeve, but all that's there is a dirty shirt cuff. That and one other thing. When you went through her brother's clothes, you found a hotel key, and that's where you go now. That's the only place where you can begin. I'm sorry, sir. No rooms available. I don't want a room. I want a guy in a room. Sure he lives here? Sure, room 712. You must be mistaken. That room is occupied by a lady. Oh, now, you wouldn't want to bet on that. I don't want to take your money. She's a Marion Reed. Uh, yeah, yeah, a tall blonde dame, about 30 What's this to you? Well, that's the woman I'm looking for. Hey, what is this? Well, you see her last. 
Get out of here. Answer my question. I'll call the police. Here I am. Start calling. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Didn't know you were the law. Get the apology. Just answer the question. Well, I saw her about 20 minutes ago. She went up to her suite with a man. You've been in for a lot of unpleasant surprises. When you get to the door, you hope that you can turn one over to the occupant of the apartment. When she opens the door, you're ready for it. What do you want? My matchbook. I decided I didn't want you to remember me after all. Why, you get uh, your foot out of my door. Come in, Amy. Who are you? Oh, that old routine again. What do you want? A guy named Bill. It's obvious you have the wrong room. And so is Bill. You just came up here with him. That's ridiculous. Now I suppose you're going to tell me you never left this room. I have. Just for a few minutes to run downstairs for a pack of cigarettes and a newspaper. Oh? Well, that's going to be a little hard to prove. I don't think it will be at all. Will it, Bill? Not at all. She's been in here in this room. You can prove it by me. I got a message from your sister, Bill. I have no sister. Too bad she believed you this time. You'll have to believe me, too. Not anymore. Just this time. Or at least try to believe that this gun goes off. They close the door in your face and you leave. On your way home, you stop off to tell Velda her brother's alive. I suppose I should say that he's better off dead. Now, you don't have to say anything. It was all a trick. Yeah. We were both used as goats. He, uh... He didn't say anything when you told him they tried to kill me? Velda. <laughs> anything for money. Hmm? Even my life. Now, look. It's not over yet. What do you mean? They're going to have to come to me. And they won't lose any time. You leave, Velda, and get back to your place fast. But you're not fast enough. I've been waiting for you, Mike. You expected something like this, but not Velda's brother. I had to talk to you, Mike. Explain. Yeah, you're just full of explanations, aren't you? I'm running away, but I wanted you to tell Velda some things for me. I didn't know they were going to try to kill her. They promised me they wouldn't do anything to her. They promised... That's not why you're here. Believe me, it is. I'll admit everything. You and Velda were used, but I couldn't help myself. I had to do things the way they wanted me to. Yeah, they needed someone to deliver that envelope. Someone who would be above suspicion. So they used me through you. Yes, yes, that's right. And I had to go along with it. It, it was the only way. The easy way for you. There was no other. There is no easy way in this kind of fight. A lot of good guys found that out in Korea. I don't have much time, Mike. You don't have any. Time ran out for you and your friend. Just wanted to tell you how sorry I am about the whole thing. You're going to be even sorry. <laughs> Stay right where you are, Mr. Hammer. Or I fire. Mike, I had no idea that she followed me here. Oh, of course not. Hmm. Well, you can believe him now. For all the good will do either of you. All right, Mr. Hammer. The envelope. Um... Envelope? Uh, you're just wasting time. I found out a little while ago that the envelope we had you deliver for us had blank papers in it. Oh, really? You switched envelopes, didn't you? Well, you got the idea. Oh, that was very foolish. I had nothing to lose. <laughs> just your life. You know, the list of names in that envelope made very interesting reading. Particularly all the espionage drops. Where's the envelope, Mr. Hammer? Well, it's, uh, it's somewhere in this room. Mm -hmm. Get it. You know, it's funny. My mind just went blank. I can't remember where I put it. You've got three seconds. Such a lousy memory. In exactly three seconds, I'll fire. No, you're not going to... the shot like a man charging a punt and you dive over him to grab the thing. You grab a gun hand and bend it back the way it doesn't move. Oh. She gets the teeth into your free hand and when you tear it away, her head almost comes along with it. She flies back and bounces against the wall. And she slides down on a heap of messed up claws. You get over to Felda's brother as fast as you can. Mike, it's no flesh wound this time, is it? He wants to say one more thing and you don't try to stop him. You were right, Mike. No easy way. But this is the best, is it? Isn't it? 
never get a chance to answer that question. But you can tell by the fixed smile on his face that he really found the answer himself. Pat Chambers and give him the whole story. And you ask him to relay it to Velda because you can't. The next morning, you drag yourself down to the office. You walk in hating the idea of facing those seedy walls, that chipped file cabinet, and the dusty window because you know that something's going to be missing. Good morning, Mike. But that something isn't missing after all. There's nothing important in the mail. Just a couple of bills. You can tell by her voice, by the way she looks, that she doesn't want to talk about it. And you know it'll never pass between you two again. This is Andrea J. Graham, author of the Web Surface series. Oh, and a madam's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. Can totally see this as a my camera story. Captures that mood just uh, perfectly for this character. Uh, and I should note that this is actually the last episode we have uh, with Larry Haynes. So next week we'll be hearing a new my camera for radio, Ted DeCorsia, and we'll tell you all about that next week. All right, well, listener comments and feedback... And uh, this comment we received from Mike, who writes in that he donated and clapped my hands a mind at your effort, interest, and to show appreciation for your involvement in old-time radio. The shows I downloaded were probably no different than the gazillions I already have on my hard drive. But I was intrigued at your range of knowledge and never take anything without paying for it. That said, I'm old and then... And then some, and probably heard many originally since I predate World War II. And I found your site through Google when I was looking for the Bishop and the Gargoyle. I have almost all OTR detectives, but wanted to see if anyone had it, not on eBay or any other vendors, and noted that you were going to put it on your website. If so, the sooner the better. Well, thank you so much for the uh, email. It's uh, very gratifying to receive and to hear that you appreciate the effort. And it's something I will keep in mind when I receive, it's about thrice annually, hate mail. And it essentially says, don't talk, just upload the episodes. Though usually in a somewhat ruder way. But of course, there are already places to download most of this material. So I really feel that I want to add value. It's the same thing with uh, video theater. Now regarding Bishop and the Gargoyle, it is right around the corner. Once we finish uh, Mike Hammer, and we've got five weeks with Ted DeCorsia before we uh, are finished with that, we will be doing a series of programs with only one episode. Four of them back to back to back to back. And I think that'll be the first one. So we're only a few weeks away from Bishop and the Gargoyle. But thank you so much for your comment and for your support. It's definitely appreciated. All right. Well, that will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for Richard Diamond. Next Tuesday, another episode of That Hammer Guy. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com.